So that's a really nice segue into our next talk, Chevere, Introductory Spanish 1 and 2, an OER textbook. And this team comes from SUNY Oneonta. So way to go, upstate New York. Um, Elizabeth Small, Alejandro Escudero, and Maria Cristina Montoya, and Ed Beck. So a team of four. So it's all yours. Okay, so I'll begin. I'm uh, Beth Small. I'm the chair of the foreign language department at SUNY Oneonta. Um, and with us today um, are my colleagues from the foreign language department, um, Alejandra Escudero and Maria Cristina Montoya. One of our colleagues, uh, Erica Brown, left her a different school. She's not with us today. But today we have Ed Beck, our colleague. Uh, he's um, an instructional designer from the Teaching, Learning, and Technology Center on our campus, and he is going to be the first person to really speak. Take it away, Ed. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'm the OER lead for our campus, and one of the things that was a little bit unique about this was because of our close partnership with our SUNY state system. Um, back in 2018, the SUNY system identified certain areas that were lacking in OER content. And I say that with all respect to everything that's going on at this great conference. I want you to remember 2018 was a completely different time for Spanish and Spanish OER projects. Um, and they said, we need a project that can be ready to adopt by anyone, anywhere with all the tools of a fully functioning course. And so they said, they put out that notice wanted Spanish authors and SUNY Oneana did a competitive grant where they were able to be funded to create those. Um, SUNY has really focused in our OER projects to have this whole catalog of ready to adopt courses, which is important for us to be able to spread it across our entire system of 64 campuses. And we're really proud that our Spanish one introductory Spanish book um, is now part of this ready to adopt catalog that uh, people are able to see and use. A very important thing they did in addition to funding us was they partnered, they partnered us with Lumen Learning who is our system's major partner in, um, in OER activities. And what this meant was this was an 18 month writing process um, for these four very dedicated faculty members. But Lumen Learning not only helped them through that process, but once it was done, they're gonna continue on with the continued maintenance of this project afterwards. So the continual improvement, this project will be maintained um, and Lumen is gonna help us do that, which is really important. Because it's a Lumen product, it's really focused on being integrated directly into the systems that we use. So it, the final product does integrate directly into our learning management system. It is something that has self checks built into it. And that's something that came out of that big partnership um, with Lumen Learning. And we're really grateful that we were able to do that. And that's what I had to say. <laughs> All right, thank you, Ed, for the introduction. Um, so I am Alejandra Escudero, and I will now be talking to you a little bit about uh, the process and what we used in order to um, write our textbook. So just so you know, we refer to it as Chevere, uh, but in fact, we actually wrote two separate parts to the Chevere textbook, one that we used at the beginner level, and um, at the beginner level part one, and the other one that we use at the beginner level part two. So the equivalent of Spanish 101 and 102, depending on your institution. So the first thing we did was that we used shared documents in order to draft goals and topics and include the vocabulary and grammar that we wanted to show our students and to teach our students in each unit. Um, so the book, as I mentioned, starts uh, at the 101 level with basic introductions, and it goes all the way to um, the presentation of the future tense as the ending of the, of the second uh, part of the book. 
Each unit starts with thematic vocabulary and contextualized grammar. We feel that just showing grammar, just for the sake of showing grammar is not useful, but we do it in a contextualized way. And this is really important because we embed this contextualized vocabulary and grammar into everything in each unit. We embed it in exercises, we embed it in um, activities, readings, and the assessment. So everything is tied together in a contextualized manner. Uh, there are different kinds of exercises. Uh, there's one kind of exercise uh, that is in individualized that students can do by, uh, by themselves and they're self-checked so they get immediate feedback. Uh, then there's another kind of exercise that there's, they're meant to do in the classroom, perhaps with a partner and do one-on-one -on -one conversations, um, small conversations. Then there are certain activities that um, they, where they can derive more personal information. And then there's more, uh, there are deeper conversations. So we take our students in a scaffolding, in a scaffolded manner through this vocabulary and grammar and elevate their discourse. We use um, a communicative approach because we want to focus on what students can do with the language versus uh, them knowing exactly what, you know, preterite and perfect it is, but actually using it in communication. Um, of course, we, were, we would not be able to do um, a good job without taking into account our professional background and the actful um, five Cs. So we took advantage of communication, communities, cultures, comparisons, and connections in order to put everything together, to tie everything together and um, embed all of our topics and grammar into our, our units. So now uh, Maria Cristina Montoya is gonna tell you a little bit about what we did with the culture sections of our book, which is super exciting and different from other materials um, around. Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, when we were discussing the culture, we wanted something different, something that is not the same as presenting the culture in a traditional way as, as other textbooks that we worked. So we thought, but we still need to inform the students in a descriptive way about various topics of culture. So we kept uh, something more authentic about culture, but then we, in, in, um, we added voices and voices, uh, it is a contribution uh, from our own students, it includes authentic, explicit cultural content that we collected from our own students. We have a lot of heritage Spanish students, uh, speakers. So we included their, um, we use their writings in some other courses while we were making the text and we included their, their narratives. So this provided an anthropological view of cultures because they were explaining what a quinceañera is from their own quinceañera, uh, where they party, they were explaining Dia de los Muertos from their own practices, how to make tamales with their family. Um, so this authentic input gave them a voice, our own students. And also we made sure that we included the second language Spanish learners because they also have a voice there in how they are um, incorporating their learning and also appreciating the, the Spanish culture. Um, also through this, uh, we created a series of assessments that follow the integrated performance approach uh, from that actful proposes and his interpretation of the text, then some questions that will prompt for the interaction, and at the end as the third step to present, to construct something with the content that they have learned on the text. So this really, will, our goal was to reveal what students can do with the language, um, the activity that engages a student in authentic interaction, and also that learners were able to construct meaning in real world context. So this was our purpose for including voices. And so far it has been very engaging with the students to, to read through the uh, content that other students have to contribute into the book. So as a last thought, uh, the final thing is, how can you get your hands on this book? Um, and I see that Jennifer Jensen has shared the, the DSpace link. Um, and that will take you to basically at this point, we've got two versions of the book. There's the 
um, Waymaker version, which which is this highly interactive formatted to, um, to connect with your um, learning management system. And we also have a PDF version of it, um, plus uh, the digital sort of the, the uh, original, basically um, Pressbooks version of the PDF version. Um, uh, that's not interactive necessarily, but allows um, uh, for download and manipulation of the text if you want to, again, this is OER, so if you want to adopt and adapt um, the book. So we have it in, in various formats for people to use and five minutes for questions. questions. So the first question we have in the yes, chat is, are you taking modification suggestions? Would you prefer to change it only as our own adaption? And how long will it take to turn around and seeing those corrections? So that's a very interesting thing. And it's part of our partnership with Lumen that Ed was talking about before. Um, they've put in a button at the bottom of the page on, on the, the Lumen version of the book that allows you to, um, to put in suggestions, typos, corrections, things that you'd like to see added or changed. Um, turn, turn around, I don't know. Um, not never, um, but I can't promise that. There is a cost to using the Lumen version um, for non-SUNY people. We, the SUNY arrangement with Lumen is for SUNY students to, basically SUNY is paying Lumen um, for it, but for outside of SUNY, it's, it's low cost though. It's basically um, 20 bucks as opposed to 200 plus, which is what we used to pay for um, a publisher's book. Um, the Lumen version is what's called the Pressbooks version. So those of you that have Pressbooks available at your university, um, you could make a clone of it and copy it. And Lumen will even help you do that um, for that because they do believe in OER. It's just that when you pay Lumen, you're paying for a help desk, you're paying for your support, you're paying for those things. Other universities might choose to do that themselves, just part of our partnership in SUNY that they do that for us. Uh, I would like to add that uh, this works in Canvas too. I I believe that it works in different uh, element LMS, and uh, that it has something uh, nice for us. It was a blessing that we had this during pandemic because it took over a lot of practice um, interactions with the students, and then the students uh, they do their independent work. And if they do well, they get a message from, from the system saying, great work. And I get a lot of students' uh, emails back saying, oh, thank you, Professor. I appreciate that you're uh, telling me that I'm doing a good job. So this really um, engages them with the material and they know that I'm paying attention to what they're doing independently as well. Thank you. We still have a couple minutes for questions. Do people have other questions? And there is a lot of people that participated in this creation. So if you, and it still participates. So if you um, are using it and feel that there's something that should be modified or better presented or, or you find an error, uh, you just click contribute and then uh, Lumen will fix it. So we, we put it out there, but it keeps growing. It keeps being modified. What's nice is with the, with the way they're taking those suggestions is right on a Google doc um, where you can go and go right into suggesting mode which also means you can copy it and make it for yourself. You know, someone else said, oh, I wish we had Google Doc versions. Well, because of the work we've done with Lumen, we already do. So there's a lot of versions of this book for those that want to continue to uh, use it, adopt it, take parts of it, um, and we welcome that. Um, I also wanted to add that if you're concerned about 
you know, what kind of materials uh, do I have in order to teach this class when we go back in person, if you're, if you're still teaching online, um, Lumen was able to provide us uh, with help in order to create additional exercises for a practice in class. There are um, PowerPoints that they created to use in class. Uh, there are, uh, there's a section called Repasos. So, uh, so students become familiar with a possible format that they might encounter on their exams. So there are all these additional things that, that come with Lumen. Um, so so what, what you could expect from our regular like Candela versions, which is like the press books or, or website uh, version of our textbook is uh, certain activities and the voices section and the culture section, but um, these added things come with the with the Lumen version of our book. So so there's there's other great uh, resources as well. Well, I think that um, we're at the end of our the session. I want to thank our team from SUNY Oneonta. That was terrific work. And um, I love how you are talking about it as the work continues. So you keep updating it. And um, that of course is the whole nature of the dynamic nature of OER. And then also the, your emphasis on collaboration as other people are, are using your work and giving you suggestions. So it just keeps going on and on and gets better and better.